A terrible injury in our last episode to one of our starting midfielders has put a little bit of a damper on our season. We're at the start of February and we learned that Ryan Christie will be gone for up to two months, so he might not even come back until April. Thankfully, we do have several other options in that midfield position, but Ryan Christie, he's a big loss. But besides the injury to Christie, there were many positives to take away from our previous three matches. A hard-fought 1-1 draw against Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge, where we had the lead for 90 minutes but just gave it away. And we held a clean sheet at home in a 1-0 victory against Forest. We're not going to talk about the 3-0 loss to Newcastle. We'll just forget about that one. And with only 15 matches left to play in our Premier League season, Bournemouth is sitting in a comfortable 8th, still hoping and praying for a European spot. We'll see if we get there, but we got to keep winning matches. A warm welcome to all the board members in another episode of the Bournemouth Career Mode. And to start off, one of our newest signings, Jakob Kivior, he is in the social media mentions. Fans are used to seeing Jakob Kivior play as a left back. Is the switch to play as a center back a permanent move or a short-term change? Well, we did convert Jakob Kivior to a center back in our previous episode, and we brought him in to play as a center back, not a left back. And since we converted Jakob Kivior to a center back, we're gonna grow him as a defender as well in the development plan. His sprint speed will go up, his heading accuracy, defensive awareness, slide tackle, and even aggression will go up as well. As the January window is coming to a close, this is a massive offer from PSG. Milos Kerkes to PSG, here we go there we land no absolutely reject 24 million pounds and you know what i bet if we counter offered like 30 they'd probably accept that but we can't get rid of milos kirkes he's not leaving more and more last minute offers are coming in for our players this one is for tyler adams from real sociedad for almost 14 million pounds but listen christy is already injured we cannot let go of another midfielder while not one dango utara on a two-year loan uh hello he's been our best left-sided midfielder he's not going anywhere the transfer window is now closed closed and unfortunately we didn't get an offer for James Hill we wanted to loan him out so he can get some game time that didn't happen he stays at the club and before we get into the matches of the episode we got some big matches today I want to show you the January transfer window show you some of the best deals some of the latest deals and anything that has to do with English clubs Federico Bernadeschi the Italian international left the MLS Toronto FC and he came to play at Burnley for nine million pounds now this is a big one Danny Carvajal left Real Madrid for Borussia Dortmund for 30 million while the former arsenal man now lyon man alexander lacazette he left lyon and he went to bilbao for 20 million hakimi's career at psg is over he's gone to atletico madrid in la liga for 51 mil while zubumendi left real sociedad and he came to play in the premier league for spurs for 38 million leicester got themselves a new striker the experienced luke de jong he left psv that is a very random one while lewis dunk left brighton and hove albion for france Nico Williams from Athletic Club Bilbao, he went to Germany to Bayern Munich. And then Antoine Griezmann left Atletico Madrid, and he's now in the Premier League against us playing at Chelsea. Tomiyasu switched from Arsenal to Fulham for 17 million. And Rodrigo De Paul left Atletico Madrid for PSG. Chelsea also got rid of Noni Madweke. He went to Real Sociedad. And Tottenham on paper might actually be looking good. They got Nuno Mendes from PSG as well for 47 million pounds they won't win a trophy anyways and finally this january we saw tapsoba leave Bayer leverkusen to arsenal for 47 million so what do we got on the calendar today guys well we're starting at home against liverpool in the prem the stadium is packed as liverpool visits dean court aka vitality stadium it is a big one in the premier league kickoff time and we are of course starting our strongest lineup it is araho no changes whatsoever dango utara does start on the left hand side instead of Tavernier or Sinistera, of course. Liverpool is uh, looking dangerous, though. I mean, they're a very, very dangerous club. Lots of quality players in that starting 11, including this guy right here, Mo Salah. He's covered. So, Boslai going forward through Cody Gakpo. He's tackled by Sinesi, and we'll go to Dango Utara right away. Dango, and he'll lose it to Alexis McAllister. Man, Liverpool is looking good here. Hopefully, we don't get ourselves caught up into too many of these attacks by Liverpool. So, Boslai. Mo Salah at the edge of the box. He'll go to Cody Gakpo. Luis Diaz now. Gakpo with a shot deflected. Liverpool corner. We're probably expected to play a lot of defense here as Virgil van Dijk tries to squeeze it in near post, but it goes wide. Luis Diaz, 29 minutes in, operating in the midfield. Dominic Soboslai. It's still nil-nil. Trent now. Out wide to Salah. Salah goes in the midfield. Drops it off to Endo. Endo to Soboslai. He's tackled. 
We're gonna try and find some menu on the counter. We can't. Udogi is playing at Liverpool, by the way, now. Yeah, Udogi is there. So, boss lie. Luis Diaz! Kepa! Strong once again. Kirkes will try and reach that ball. He can't. It'll go back to Dominic Saboslai. This is dangerous. Poor attempt from Cody Gakbo. Hopefully that goes out of bounds and it does. Crisis averted, my friends. There we have a rare attack going forward through Dango Utara. Dango drops it off. We'll go back to Dango. Back to Clivert. Clivert in the midfield. Looking for some runs. He'll find Semenyo. Udogi will slide in. And that is 45 minutes, actually. That's it. That's the first half. Not a lot happened for us going forward, but we played well defensively, and Liverpool didn't score. Second half, and this is where we got to put on our creative boots because we didn't create a lot in that first half. I, I'd like to create at least a few more opportunities in the second half, you know, maybe get a shot on net or two as Luis Diaz going forward. It's Salah. It's going to be 1-0. One 1-0 nil. One nil Liverpool. As soon as we say we got to be creative, Liverpool put on their creative hat and give themselves a 1-0 lead. Trent Alexander-Arnold going forward. He's going to try and find Mohamed Salah. And he's beaten Milos Kirkes for pace to that ball. Kirkes is trying to stay with him. Sabosla so now. Kirkes. Gakpo. Out. Kepa. Another save. He's been good. We see Evan Nielsen making the run. And he'll actually get to that ball. He'll be tackled. There's no foul. I mean, maybe we should have got a free kick there. Diaz into the midfield so boss lie now so boss lie shot it's a weak shot keppa can make it we're gonna make some changes evan nielsen clivert and dango off unal scott and luis sinisterra gets an opportunity this is your moment luis it's not happening for us we're holding on here one nil it's a tight match but we haven't created nothing offensively like seriously we've been so poor going forward in this game just like there i mean it's just not there nothing is there nothing we're getting absolutely nothing out of this game. We can praise our defenders, but we can't really... Oh, no. Oh, Keppa. We can praise our keeper as well. What another great save. There is the final whistle. 97 minutes. The ref gave Liverpool an extra four minutes to play. Ah, defensively, I'm proud. Offensively, extremely disappointed. But this man right here, Keppa, he was the man of the match for us. Transfers for Alex Scott just don't stop, by the way. We had a transfer rejected for 10 and a half million pounds. Now, Atletico Madrid, even though the transfer window is closed, want to buy Alex Scott for 12 and a half million pounds clearly big clubs see something special in this kid but we also see something special in this kid that's why we're not selling him now our next match is against brentford in the fa cup and it's quite an important match because as you can see by our board expectations in the fa cup we need to reach the round of 16 stage and for us to do that we have to beat brentford it's good that we're at home and we're gonna start quite a rotational lineup in this fa cup to give some guys some rest and to give other guys some playing time Travers will start in net it will be the back four of Lelo, Kivior, Housen, and Aarons. The midfield pairing will be Philip Billing and Tyler Adams. Out wide on the left-hand side, it will be Tavernier. Out wide on the right-hand side, it will actually be Alex Scott because he can play there. Down the middle in the central attacking midfield, it will be Joe Bellingham, who will hopefully feed some passes to the man up front, Ennis Uno. Back-to-back -back matches at home at the Vitality Stadium as Brentford visits us for a date in the FA Cup round of 32. We lost to Liverpool 1-0 at home. Let's bounce back and get a win at home in our second match in the FA Cup. Very important match, guys. This is very important. Why? Because the FA Cup is also another pathway to European football for us. It doesn't really matter what kind of European football we get. I would love to get any type of European football in our first season here at Bournemouth. Will it happen? I'm not sure, but the FA Cup just provides just another opportunity for us to, to try and achieve that. So, let's try and get as far as we can in the FA Cup as Mbumo is going forward and Kramaric very, very dangerous, but Housen has his number. We're gonna find Lelo here. Try and find Lelo. We're gonna find him. Lelo, he's fast, but he's covered by three people. <laughs> he's just gonna lose the ball. You know what? Brentford's playing actually really well defend defensively. They're covering a lot of our open areas here. But that area they don't have covered. They don't have Enes Unal covered on his left. Oh my, no mistake. No mistake from Mr. Enes Unal. Oh, that is a beautiful ball. Brentford left him wide open and Enes Unal capitalizes. It was a beautiful ball over the defense, man. And Enes Unal on his left foot. That is an tremendous finish. <laughs> no goalkeepers getting to that one. 1-0. One Visa going forward. Max Ahrens. Gives the ball away. No. Visa. Can we get there? Yes, it's Dean Housen. What a monster, man. Absolute monster. Oh, no. 
Another injury. Another injury. And Kramaric is gonna get a yellow for it. Awful challenge. That is an awful challenge on Dean Housen. But you know what? Housen has recovered. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. I thought he's gonna be injured as well. That would have been awful. A chippy first 45. We score. Brentford's not happy about it. They're trying to injure our players. It just got personal. Brentford will start off in the second half with the ball. Same effort. We need that same mentality. Let's not let our emotions control this game. We just play to our best ability. Play wonderful defense, like that. Yes, get the ball out. Not like that, Max. Not like that. Not like that, brother. Like that from Kivior. Oh my, what a pass. Joe Bellingham! It's gonna be there! It's not there! <laughs> what a pass from Job to Ennis Unal! He hit the crossbar! He got the rebound, but he couldn't control the rebound! Max Aarons going forward. Max Aarons. We see the run being made by Alex Scott, and he's gonna get in behind here a little bit. And he's gonna try and dink it to Enes Unal. Nice touch off the knee. Valdimarsson will collect it. All right, let's buckle down here. Buckle down. Buckle down. It's 1-0. Buckle down. It's Visa. It's Kivi, your baby. Look at the standing ovation. He is truly a cherry. And we see Enes Unal making the run once again. And maybe this time. Unal. Yes. Yes, baby. Enes Unal. Come on! And I think that was from Joe Bellingham. No mistake once again. FA Cup round of 16, here we come. Bringing on a couple of guys with a couple of minutes left to play. Smith is getting on the field. James Hill is getting on the field. David Brooks is getting on the field. You know, just give him a little bit of playing time. Keep him in the rotation, right? We need those guys to stay fresh in case of injuries. Like we've already seen injuries happen. And just maybe, you never know, maybe we can create something here. Unal? Oh, it's David Brooks. He's in. Oh, what a goal. What a goal in stoppage time from David Brooks. We said maybe we could create something, and here it is. Right away. These guys come on. They make an impact. It's Enes Una with a brilliant header down to David Brooks, and the finish is emphatic. It's a very, very nice time finish, man. I mean, no goalkeeper is saving that one. Lots of power. Now, this is a statement win as the final whistle is blown. 3-0 domination against Brentford in in the FA Cup. Several different contributors, several different players in form, but no better than this man right here, Enes Unal. Should we do a little press conference then, shall we guys? Yeah, let's answer some questions about Jakob Kivior. Kivior put in a show-stopping performance today. Look at the number of successful tackles. Were you impressed with that performance? We have to celebrate Kivior's performance. In fact, this is the reason why we bought him, and this is the reason why we converted him to a center back to play in big matches like this and perform in big matches like this. Unal especially stood out today as a menace for your opposition are you pleased with his performance remember his slow start in the beginning of the season and some of us even talked about maybe even getting rid of Enes Unal but now I don't think Enes Unal could go anywhere and speaking of Enes Unal after a great performance in the match against Brentford in the FA Cup Unal is named player of the match he was dominant we got the email from our development team that Bellingham Jr. can officially become an advanced playmaker we are applying that role to him there we go playmaker and he gets that plus 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 in the role growth. And speaking of growing, look at the growing contributions by Enes Unal as of late. Yes, Evan Nielsen still leads the way in goals, just a ridiculous amount of goals. 15 goals and 24 appearances, 14 of them are in the Premier League. But Enes Unal, eight goals and two assists in 20 matches, that is brilliant. While Antoine Semenyo is also having a phenomenal season, three goals and eight assists, 11 goal contributions and 24 Premier League appearances. I mean, can Evan Nielsen be considered for the Golden Boot Award this season? He's only two goals away from Sun. While Semenya was tied for second in the Premier League for assists. And Kepa leads the league in clean sheets. Now, the one thing I will say is, although we've been playing well in the FA Cup, our last few Premier League matches have really been up and down. But we're still sitting currently in eighth place in the Prem. We're still only four points off fifth. But we really have to start putting together a few Premier League wins in a row. And that is exactly what we're going to try and do in the next episode. Away at Southampton, home to Wolves, and away at Brighton. Three winnable games i'm hoping for nine points so i'll see you guys in the next episode take care of yourselves take care of each other stay happy and stay healthy always keep smiling of course thank you for supporting the series i really appreciate it i'll see you guys soon peace 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 peace